morning and welcome everyone. And a welcome to our, um, to our congregation and visitors online as well. We're thankful that we can gather together even though uh, our numbers are restricted more and more each time. Uh, ah, as a friend of mine who's a missionary reminded me, uh, you know, we go through these times but we remember that no matter how many are gathered together, two or three even, uh, Lord is with us there as well. And that's for all those at home as well. It's not our numbers, it's uh, Jesus says, I am with you. So as we worship him, we worship in spirit and in truth. It is the third Sunday of Advent. Uh, it's the theme of joy. And we will be focusing on Zachariah and Elizabeth's joy in having a son uh, at an unexpected time in their year as well. So we are Bethel Church. For those who found us online, for those who are guests here as well, um, Christmas is a time of light, a time of hope, and a time where uh, we say, uh, yes, Lord, let your light shine through us into the world around us as well. So as we um, begin our worship, let's come to our Lord in prayer. King of glory, you are God. You are powerful. You rule the entire world. We praise you because you are so great, but you became a baby. You were tiny and weak. You were just like us. And we praise you because you came, and we look forward to when you will come again. In your name we pray, and God's people said, Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand for the call to worship, and it is a litany. So we gather in preparation, for good news is about to be proclaimed. We gather in expectation, for joy is about to explode in our midst. And we gather in celebration, for we are those people who have said yes to the manger, yes to love in flesh, yes to the one incarnate for others, Yes to the wholeness of God. With preparation and an expectation, let us celebrate. And one of the reasons we celebrate is because God is with us. He is here this morning as we worship and as we praise him. And God greets us as we come into his house. He says, children, it is great to see you. And he welcomes us with these words from scripture. May grace, may mercy... And may peace be yours today and always from God our Father and Jesus the Christ, through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. And as God has greeted us, take a moment, turn around, see who is around you, uh, say hi, a thumbs up, uh, hello to those at home as well, wave to the camera. And... Uh, and as we um, kind of turn our attention back to, uh, uh, to worship, we'll sing, Now Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
be seated. And we light the third candle of joy this morning. From the perspective of Zechariah, when he can finally share the king is coming. So long had I been silent, like the prophets from of old, with not a single utterance, no words from God unfold. Yet when my infant John was born, God gave me back my voice. The Spirit gave me words to speak, and how I now rejoice. Praise be the God of Israel, how wonderful his ways. From my heart come pouring forth more songs of joy and praise. At last the son of David comes to ransom and to save, to free us from our enemies and those who would enslave. And you, my child, you will be called a prophet right and true, who prepares the way before the Lord, who's coming after you. My child, blessed be the one who for Christ prepares the way, You'll call to all, repent, believe, and turn to God today. Baptize those who do believe and yearn to seek God's face. Those who live in darkness need to see God's light of grace. Go to those who are afar and also those who are near. Tell the news to everyone. The Lord will soon appear. He'll lead us in the paths of peace, and soon we all will find. He'll dwell with us. Abide with us, the Savior of mankind. On this third Sunday in Advent, we prepare the way of the Lord. We light the first, second, and third candles of Advent to recognize our role in sharing Christ's light with the world. And we join in singing once again, Blessed be the God of Israel.
opportunity now in, in our worship to come to God in prayer, a prayer of God's people. And there are a number of people that we'll be praying for this morning. Uh, Pastor Lawrence, uh, a friend of the congregation, I guess a former member as well, was a missionary here in Western Canada and Northwestern uh, the States as well. Uh, is having surgery this Friday in, uh, in Calgary. I'm not sure exactly what it's for, but I've been told it's uh, pretty serious. Um, Polly is waiting for, uh, yeah, still a, a path forward in her uh, uh, treatment as well. We continue to remember Clarence and Doreen, uh, two members of our congregation, uh, lost loved ones this week. They went home to the Lord. Uh, Margaret's brother Bill went home to the Lord. And uh, Eleanor and Bill's um, uh, her brother Richard passed away this morning. Uh, he's in the Grand Rapids area as well. Uh, but we also have celebration. Uh, Andrew is with us this morning. Um, yeah, we're just thankful that you're healthy. And uh, I know there's still a process to go as well to full health. But uh, yeah, it's a joy to uh, see you here this morning as well. So let's come to our, our Lord in prayer. Father, it's, uh, it's Advent, it's a time of waiting, it's a time of, uh, of looking back and watching how, and seeing how Israel and, and the world was waiting for the coming of your son, and, and it's still a time of waiting as we wait for your son to return, um, but it's a Sunday that we focus on joy, uh, on uh, not happiness, but, but joy that is deep down, joy that, that finds itself in you, no matter what our circumstances. Uh, Lord, as a, as a world, uh, we were going through a pandemic, and, and Lord, it's not like pandemics of, of old in, uh, of, uh, as in the past, but, but it's, it's more of a one uh, that has created anxiety and fear, frustration among many. Um, it's, uh, it's a disease we don't quite understand completely yet. And, uh, and Lord, it's creating so much conflict and, uh, and that between people as well. And, and Lord, that in some ways, that is how Satan is using um, something like this as well to even divide uh, your people. So, so Lord, we remember that our joy is in you. It's not in our circumstances. It's not in the things that are going around us, but it's found in our trust, knowing that you are with us always, that even though we are unable to, to be together as a whole church family, that wherever we are, whether there's uh, two or three, and, and sometimes even uh, there are those who are alone worshiping you, that you are with us uh, no matter where we are, that we are never completely alone, that you will guide us and, and you will lead us through this time as well. And, and that's the joy of hope and, uh, and of joy is that it's based on hope. It's based on, uh, on trust and knowing who you are, that you are our God, and that you are in control, and that you will carry us through this time as well. Uh, but Lord, there are still, still needs, there are still things that, uh, that members of our family are, are wrestling with. Lord, we pray for Pastor Lawrence as, as he heads into surgery this, uh, this Friday. We pray that you will be with uh, the doctors and nurses, that uh, they may do the surgery well, that he may come through it well also. We pray for his family as they, uh, as they walk alongside him and as they wait as well with him uh, through, uh, for the surgery to happen and for the recovery afterwards. We pray for, for Polly, who is, who is waiting for more information and for uh, doctors to uh, work with her to figure out her path forward as, um, as she deals with a reoccurrence of uh, cancer as well. Uh, 
Lord, Clarence and Doreen are, are walking along family members on both sides of their family who, um, who are, have deep uh, health issues and struggles as well. And Lord, there are so many others also. We think of Pastor Jesus uh, from the Ensenada Church, uh, whose mother is, is on oxygen, and, and he hopes to be able to visit her still uh, as well. It seems to be a, a very serious situation too. Lord, there are so many who are struggling with health, uh, with colds, um, with fear, with anxiety. Uh, and Lord, we... We, we lift them up to you, and, and Lord, we, we take a moment in silence to, to pray for those that, that we know who haven't been mes- mentioned, um, but also to pray for our community, um, who there are many who are wrestling with so many different things. So, Lord, hear our prayers as we come to you in silence. Lord, we also come and we bring to you Margaret and Eleanor and, and, and Bill as, as they mourn the, the passing of, of family members. Lord, we pray that you'll be with Margaret. May she feel your, your comfort and your hope as you took her brother Bill home to be with you uh, this week. Pray for Eleanor and, and for Bill as well, as Eleanor's brother Richard also went home. Uh, you took him home this morning. Lord, may they feel your, your comfort and your strength and your peace. And Lord, for all those who are mourning, uh, we pray that uh, on this blue Christmas Sunday as well, that uh, they may feel your comfort, they may feel your presence surround, you, uh, surround them. Lord, bless them in, in this way. But Lord, there are many things to give thanks for as well. We give thanks that Andrew's uh, able to be here worshiping with us after, uh, after that uh, virus that, that he caught or that, yeah, um, Lord, you know what was all going on. And uh, Lord, we thank you for a, a good health system and we thank you that you carried his family through this as well. Lord, you are powerful, and you're able to carry us and guide us through all the storms, all the stresses of life. Uh, Lord, it's not always easy, um, but Lord, we know we can turn to you and that you will give us what we need. We know that you're working to shape us in all circumstances to be more who you, and who you created us to be, uh, more and more uh, yeah, filled with, with the fruit of the Spirit, filled with, uh, with the confidence and peace that comes from uh, knowing you and being your children. Uh, but Lord, we also pray for forgiveness. Um, Lord, we, we come, we confess our sins, and we shall do that in silence. We confess, you know, all those times where we failed to do what you've called us to do, who you've called us to be. For, for all those times we've hurt others, we've uh, been focused so much on ourselves rather than on uh, loving, loving you and, and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Uh, but Lord, we not only confess, we also ask that you forgive um, that we might experience the, the forgiveness, the, the letting go, uh, so that as we repent, as we change, Lord, we know that we are made right with you. So we come in silence to, uh, to confess our sins, the ways that we have not been who you've called us to be.
And Father, we commit ourselves to following you and and trusting in your will and in your law for for our lives, knowing that you desire uh, what's best for us. And and Lord, that's that's not always what we think is best. So Lord, we we ask as well that you you grow our faith so that we may walk in trust uh, and in faith. And Lord, we ask as well that you will use us as individuals and as a church uh, to be a blessing, um, to to help us to be a light that shines into our community, that shines into the lives and hearts. So Lord, shine in us and through us so that this world, this community may know your peace as well, that they may experience joy in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're focusing on Zechariah's, um, yeah, prophecy. It's called a prophecy, but it's also a, a celebration as well, a blessing. So Nolan and Tessa are going to lead us in, um, uh, in just a reader's theater to give us a perspective from a a little different angle. Hey, did you see what happened at Uncle Zechariah and Aunt Elizabeth's house yesterday at their new baby circumcision ceremony? No, what happened? It must be pretty amazing for you to be so excited. They're so old. Nothing exciting ever happens there. Well, you know that Uncle Zechariah hasn't been able to talk ever since he saw the angel in the temple and Aunt Elizabeth became pregnant. Aunt Elizabeth said it's been so quiet since Uncle couldn't talk. But then when the guest asked Aunt Elizabeth for the baby's name, she said it was going to be John. And when they looked at Uncle Zechariah, He wrote the same thing down on a tablet. Then all of a sudden, Uncle Zechariah got his voice back again. Wow, what did he say? Did he say anything really special? He sang a song all about his baby boy, John, and praising God. In the song, Uncle Zechariah said that John is going to be a prophet who's going to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. There was so much I didn't really understand, but Uncle sang about a lot of the Old Testament promises about the Messiah, a strange but cool song. I hope somebody wrote it down so that we can all learn it. Any song about God and his promises is special, and we need God's special promises right now with all the trouble around. It's a perfect time for the Messiah to come. Amen. Let's go find the other kids and see if they want to play. Let's turn to to Scripture, to Luke chapter 1, verses 67 through 79. In my version, it's called Zechariah's Song. I'm reading from the NIV, the 2011, so if you're reading from uh, the 1984, it might be a little bit different. Um, But yeah, if you're on your tablets, you maybe uh, have the English Standard Version or on your phones. But it's nice to hear the little differences, how it's translated as well. So here's how Luke describes Zechariah's excitement. So his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. 
to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. For you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him. To give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven. To shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the path of peace. The word of the Lord. Father, we've we've come to you, we've, we've, we've sung praise to you, we've heard your welcome, your greeting. We've been able to pray and and to hear your word, to hear what what others around Zechariah might have said as well. And Lord, I I pray that our time of worship, that that this whole time may may shape us and form us more and more into the people you've called us, created us to be. And I pray that the words that you'll be spoken now, Lord, may they be your words and not mine. Pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Oh, Zachariah. I can relate in some ways to Zachariah, though I really feel sorry for him because for over nine months, he couldn't talk. He had to be silent. And he couldn't say a single word. All because he doubted the angel's announcement that he and Elizabeth, his wife, were going to have a baby. Yeah, no, sure, they were a little old and, and they were well past the age of, of having babies, as Luke tells us. But really, you know, if, if, if the angel would have come in a dream or a vision, I, I could say, yeah, I can see where you doubt and, and you'd kind of wait to see if it all played out in that. But, but Zachariah is serving in the temple. He's in the Holy of Holies. You go into the Holy of Holies one day a year so that you can figure out and you can hear God. It gives God an opportunity to meet face to face with the priest that's chosen that year. Well, if you're going into the Holy of Holies to meet God, why would you be surprised when he shows up? And why would you be surprised when he says, I'm going to do something? I just, I sometimes wonder, because Zechariah grew up learning all the stories of, of special babies, of, of Abraham and, and Sarah. You know, they couldn't have babies. She was like 90, he was 100. And there was others who, who kept coming to God, Hannah, who just couldn't have a baby. There was Rachel, who, who, who prayed to God for, for a child. And, and all these births that happened when when the mother couldn't have children, when the couples couldn't have children. And still he doubts, knowing what God can do. And as I was sitting, I was wondering, we know the stories of Jesus. We know what he has done. We have all the stories of God in the Bible and, and through history as well since, uh, since Jesus went back to, to heaven in the time of the church. And yet, why do we sometimes doubt that God is still doing things? Why do we, we doubt that that our testimony, that our, our, our sharing of Jesus with others isn't going to lead to something. I, I wondered, why do I doubt that if I talk to my neighbor about Jesus, 
that he's ever going to show up in a church or ever going to, to connect with Jesus, why do we doubt? Because I think doubt and fear is what keeps us from really talking to people, really focusing on, on who we're supposed to be as a church, leading people to Jesus, making disciples, and we all have opportunities at, uh, in our neighborhood, at our work, at school, with friends. And yet I think most of us doubt that God's really going to do something. So I guess maybe I shouldn't wonder so much about Zachariah's doubt. Because God is active. He is doing things around the world, and yet sometimes we just don't see it. But it's not until after Zechariah's son is born, and heads up, treasure seeker, that Zechariah gets his voice back. It's circumcision day. It's eight days after John is born. And it's also the, the, the day that the couple would give their baby their name. And it's a, it's a fun day. You get your friends over, you get your family over, and it's a big ceremony. And, and everybody is excited because they're going to wonder, is, is he going to name the baby after himself? Is it going to be Zachariah or, or maybe after one of his grandfathers or, or maybe a special uncle or a close friend or maybe one of the heroes of the faith? You know, maybe they'll name him Samson or, or, or David or, or Solomon or, or Jehu or, you know, there's so many different names. So, so what's, what's the baby's name going to be? I feel sorry for the baby for circumcision, but yeah, everybody else is focused on the name and on the excitement that, that, that's, that that's all involved. And, and the time comes, and, and Zechariah can't say anything, so Elizabeth says, his name's John. And the people go, huh? What do you mean, John? Where'd you get that name from? So they look at Zechariah, they go, hmm? And he gets a tablet and he writes on there, his name is John. And the people go, okay, your choice, you know, sure, it's, I guess so. And because Zachariah has now had nine months to learn to trust God, nine months to, to watch God at work as, as his wife conceives and has his baby and gives birth, and, and now the proof of God's word is, is sitting in Elizabeth's arm. Zechariah has learned not to doubt, but to trust. And in that trust, that trust that's shown by saying, yes, his name is John, just like he was told in the temple, Zachariah's voice comes back. And the first thing he does is praise God. And, and, and the church has named this prophecy, this, this praise. They, they've named it the Benedictus, which is Latin for benediction or blessing. It's a prayer that, that even today, monks around the world start their day with praying it. And it comes from St. Jerome's Latin translation of the Bible called the Vulgate. And, and it translated the first line of this prophecy is, Benedictus esto dominus duus Israelis, which in English is, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel. I figured if I had to learn Latin all those years, you can learn a little too this uh, Advent uh, season. But I'm thinking about Zachariah, and I'm thinking, man, I would have talked about my son. I, I would have taken him from Elizabeth. I would have seen, see how strong he is? See, he looks just like me. Or maybe he looks like my father or an uncle. I, I would have said, look, he's got 10 toes and 10 fingers. And, and look at the hair in his head. And, and look how hard he cries. He's a strong boy. But, but no, Zachariah, he doesn't talk about his son at all at first. He's just praising God. He's just getting, you know what? God's given me these words to say. He's given me this prophecy. 
Now, when we think of prophecy, we often think of prophecy as, as looking into the future. But when you read in the Bible, the majority of prophecy is actually forthtelling. It's about saying what God is doing right now. And that's what, that's what Zechariah does. Because he wants us to see, God wants us to see how he's at work right now. So from the blessing, Zechariah goes straight into telling everyone that God has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of David. But did you hear that? God has come. It's not God is coming. It's God is here right now. And the Lord come in Greek is, it, it talks about like a doctor coming. It's a doctor visiting his parents, patient. It's a doctor coming to bring healing, to bring newness in life, to, to bring medicine. And, and God has come to bring healing. And he's come as a child in Mary's womb. to come to experience the brokenness of the, the world in order to bring healing and hope. God's redeeming his people already already by becoming a baby, becoming a human in Mary. And he's come to save his people. He's come as, as a horn of salvation. And, and it's an it's a image of a power, an image of strength. You know, Jesus is a human being growing inside Mary, but he is also God. And, and as that horn of salvation, this is an image of a power, of strength. Jesus may be a baby, but he is, he's not weak and helpless. You, you get in Revelation especially that's these pictures of, of power and strength, of, of Jesus coming on, on a white horse in, in, Revelation, in Revelation 19. No, he comes as, as, as a warrior on, on a white horse. And in Revelation 5, he's a, he's a lamb, it's slain, but he has seven horns of power on his forehead. And this all comes out of the image of, of Deuteronomy, um, of Psalm 132. Here I will make a horn grow for David and set up a lamp for my anointed one. He's coming as a descendant of the warrior King David to save his people from their enemies, to, of all, the, of all those who hate, who hate God's people. And as I hear Zechariah talk about, you know, coming to, to save from all those who hate us, I took a look around in the news and kind of read through through different papers in different parts of the world. And still today, God's people, the Jews and the church, but especially the Jews, still face a lot of hatred. Being in Montreal for 12 years, being in a uh, largely Jewish uh, community, we saw it a lot. Synagogues would, would get graffitied. You go downtown Montreal in, in Westmount where, where the very conservative Jews with the hats and the tassels and the beard, and they would get mocked as they walked down the street. And the church isn't innocent of it either. The church through history has had its moments as well. And all the people at Zachariah's house, as they're listening to, to Zachariah talk about, about this, this horn of salvation, talk about being saved from the hands of those who, who hate them, they would have heard Zachariah referring to the Romans. You know, because the Romans, they had defeated Israel, but they couldn't stand the Jews. The Jews were just a pain to them. They were a problem that never seemed to go away. And, and, and Pontius Pilate, you know, later on, uh, that's who Jesus meets at the night of his death, who, who, who capitulates. Pontius Pilate was especially cruel to, to, to the Jews. And this is the environment that, that they're living in. And this, this is who they think that God is coming to save. 
save them from? Who, who this Jesus that they don't know about yet, but that's growing in Mary's womb, has come to save them from? But, but actually, and again, heads up, treasure seekers, Jesus has come to save us from two way more powerful, powerful enemies. Come to save us from Satan and from death. The battle is on for the salvation of God's people. God has now come to engage Satan in the place where, where Satan believes he's most powerful. Not long after Jesus' birth, you know, Satan works through Herod and, and, and puts it in Herod's, Herod's heart to kill all the babies in Bethlehem because Satan is trying to get rid of Jesus while he's still a little child and 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 when Mary and Joseph led by God and and the Magi they they leave for Egypt they come back but then when Jesus starts his ministry Jesus goes into the wilderness first to prepare himself to purify himself to get himself ready for ministry and there Satan engages him head on And then Satan is saying, yeah, yeah, I know, just like you know, the world is going to be yours, and and you know, but there's a a way better way to do this. You know what, you're hungry right now. You know what, turn these rocks into bread, and and you know what, you'll be strong for when you get back to where all the people are, and, 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 and then you can feed all kinds of people. Jesus does, twice. Feeds a whole lot of people with bread that's miraculously made, but he doesn't do it for himself. And then when Jesus says no, he says, well, you know what? If you throw yourself from the temple, you know, people are going to be amazed. They'll follow you all the way to the end of the world. No problem. Everybody wants something like a superhero who can do that. And Jesus says no. I'll tell you what. You don't have to do anything. I can give you the whole world. I can make the whole world kneel before you. All you got to do is kneel before me. And Jesus says, no. But Jesus doesn't just say no. Jesus is preparing himself for this battle. And we hear about the armor of God in Ephesians. And Jesus is is, is putting it on. And and he's using the word of God as a sword against Satan to say, no way. And he strikes Satan out. He says, no way. And Satan leaves. But but for the rest of his three years that Jesus is, is, is working and, and teaching and doing miracles, Satan is always there tempting him, always there trying to lead him away from God's path. This was a real battle that, Satan was in, that, that Jesus was engaged in. It was not just him walking around talking for a few years and and doing some really cool stuff and then he battled Satan on the cross. This is an ongoing battle and it's for souls. It's for our souls. It's for the souls of all God's people. And that's what we have to remember here in Bethel Church as well that, that we're engaged in that same battle for souls And we need to have that armor as well. We need to know the word of God. We need to know God. We need to be filled with his spirit. We need to be as passionate about other people's souls as Jesus is as well. Because there's a whole lot of people who who don't know Jesus. And that's why we're here. There are a whole lot of people who know his name, but they've never really met him. They, They may have grown up even in churches, but never really engaged because there's a lot of people who go to church for a lot of reasons and not all of them have accepted Christ. We need to have these conversations and say, where are you at? Where is your hope? Where do you find your peace? Where do you find your strength when times are hard? Who do you trust? And introduce them to who Jesus is. Through our stories, through our battles, how Jesus has been with us, battling with us and for us. You know, Jesus is that horn of salvation. And we're part of that same battle that Jesus fights against Satan. God fulfills his promises to send 
the son of Mosiah who will crush the head of the serpent and save God's people. He remembers his holy covenant to Abraham who rescues us from the hand of our enemies. Jesus enters this battle so that we can serve God without fear in holiness and righteousness all our days. And we, we serve God by engaging in those good works he's prepared for us to do. But some of those good works, a lot of those good works are also conversations, modeling, mentoring others into a relationship with Jesus. And then we also do it by working for justice in a healthy community, working to build people up and help them be who God has created them to be, investing in each other, and in our community. And now, Zechariah turns to his son and talk about John and the role John's going to play for Jesus. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. John is the advanced troop for Jesus' coming, getting everything ready so that, that when Jesus comes, they're ready to hear. And John's message is repent, repent and believe. For the kingdom of God is is near. He's calling people to to, to come back to God, to to change your ways. Repentance is about changing our lives, changing who we believe in, to believe in God rather than ourselves. People, People need to be prepared to receive Jesus' message to accept his invitation to follow him, to find freedom and salvation rather than follow Herod or Caesar or, or, even, or even the Pharisees and Sadducees who are, are so focused on finding salvation and following rules rather than following God. And what a kingdom Jesus is bringing in. A kingdom where salvation and freedom is found through forgiveness of our sins rather than swords and battle axes. Our enemies aren't governments and, 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 uh, and, 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 and armies. They're not even really, it's not even really our culture. Because a lot of, a lot of people say, you know, we have to fight against our culture. Actually, the battle is within our own hearts and souls and minds. It's the things and the people who draw us into sin, into becoming who God doesn't want us to be. And that's why John the Baptist's message is a call to repentance, a return to God. John points to the kingdom of heaven as a heart kingdom where loyalty to God is the first thing, is above all things, including our own wants and desires where we're servants of God, where, as Jesus says, you know, he came to to serve rather than to be served. And and he says, you know, you be the same way. To obey Jesus' call in Matthew 5, to be perfect as God is perfect, or as Leviticus says, to be holy as God is holy. And you kind of go, wow. How can I be holy? Isn't holy like perfectly pure and, and never sinning? And, and when we know ourselves, we go, there's no way I'm ever going to be perfectly pure. But holy means to be set apart for God, to, be, to allow God to use us for his stuff rather than our stuff. Melissa Overmeyer writes, holiness is possible. God, by his mercy and grace, has made it possible for each of us to be holy. He actually promised it to us. And this is the good news that we are to proclaim. That's that forgiveness of sins, that washing clean of our sin. 
May we follow the example of John and take to heart the words Zacharias spoke about him. Go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. You know you're saved as you experience forgiveness. And when we share this good news, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Jesus enters into the world to take on Satan and death, redeem us, to save us, to make us, to wash our sin away, to help us and remind us that we are holy, set apart for God, to bring peace. And Jesus is more than a gentle shepherd. I remember my dad once saying to, to one of the elders, he says, it was a pastor we had, and, and he focused so much on Jesus as a gentle uh, shepherd, on, on somebody who carried us when we wandered away and, and that. And, and my dad says, but I, I want somebody who's going to fight. I, I want a God, I want a Jesus who's going to go to battle for me. I want somebody who's stronger than anything that comes up against me because I know the temptations in my heart. He says, there's a place for Jesus as, as, as a lamb carrying, seeking shepherd, but I also need that warrior. I need somebody who's going to stand for me in, in all those hard places in life. And this is the God that Zechariah is prophesying, is talking about. It's a warrior like King David. King David who fought lions and bears, who goes up against a giant to save his shepherd, to save his sheep, but also to save his people. And in the same way, Jesus comes to save us. And he goes up against Satan. He goes up against all those, all those temptations. He goes up against death. And in dying on the cross, he defeats Satan, but he also defeats death because three days later, he rises up and says, and you join me in that new life. Because I died and was resurrected in the same way you'll go through death, but into new life. Life with me forever. And those are the words of hope we bring to those who are living in fear of darkness and anxiety and, and fear and guilt and shame and doubt. And, and Jesus also comes to shine his light in us, his people, his church, so that we can shine it out as well into the world to bring us strength and peace. Next week, we're going to hear about the angels. We're going to go way more into peace, on what peace is and what glory is as well. But know that Jesus has fought the greatest battles for us so that we can proclaim his peace. We can also experience his peace. And in experience his peace, we also experience his joy. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you for, for, for this picture of Jesus as, as this horn of salvation, as this strength, as, as this warrior who fights for us and for our souls and who defeats Satan, who goes up against him his whole life and who in the end defeats him by dying and rising again. And Lord, this is a picture of hope, a picture that no matter what we're going through, that you're on our side and that your son is fighting for us and with us to establish his kingdom more and more. So Lord, help us. Help us to, to, to shine a light of hope, that light of peace into our community too. Amen. In response, let's sing, Christ whose glory fills the skies.
seated. Our offering this morning is for, uh, for Bethel Budget. Um, yeah, this is for all the, help us in all the ministries and, and all the things that we do as a church to, uh, to be that presence for Christ here in the community of Lacombe. So we have a prayer for the offering and treasure seekers heads up on this prayer. So we pray, what can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him. I give him my heart. Amen. Just a couple of announcements before we head out. Um, this is the first week we kind of did registration online for, uh, for worship. So at home or if you're here, um, the link will be sent every Monday morning to sign up for, uh, for the different services. And as we kind of get closer to Christmas, there's lots of different services. Uh, so you'll need to sign up for each one. It's a real easy, you just click on it, it takes you right to it, you fill it in. Um, it's a very simple form, so please don't be afraid to, uh, uh, to try it. And then for our Blue Christmas service this evening at 6.30, uh, there is lots of room still, so if you would like to attend, and because this is the first Sunday of registration, uh, please feel free to, to come. Um, or if you know of someone who could use uh, some words of hope, uh, some words of comfort and peace, um, you know, let them know about it as well. Um, so let's, uh, let's uh, stand now for God's uh, parting blessing. So may you see God's light on the path ahead when the road you walk is dark. May you always hear, even in your hour of sorrow, the gentle singing of the lark. When times are hard, may hardness never turn your heart to stone. May you always remember when the shadows fall, you do not walk alone. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. How bright appears the morning star. <laughs>